Alright, here we go. This video is going to be a bit of a weird one, at least for me personally, because I don't really have a format for it. I just want to sit down and write all my thoughts on this game, and going formatless seems to be the only way I'll be able to do it. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is the new game from the Arkham series creators Rocksteady Studios. But make no mistake, just because this is for some reason canon to the Arkhamverse doesn't mean it's your typical Arkham game. Instead, it's more of a looter shooter, a bit like the Destiny games, with four different playing styles depending on which character you're playing as. The story follows four members of the Justice League, Batman, Superman, The Flash, and Green Lantern being brainwashed by Brainiac, who's not only destroying Metropolis, but every universe. Wonder Woman being the only member who didn't get brainwashed. Due to this, Amanda Waller and her almighty brilliance brings Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, King Shark, and Deadshot out of Arkham to fight against the Justice League and Brainiac. I think the opening tutorial is pretty cool, giving you a feel of each character's playstyle as you get them to each other, while exploring this barren wasteland that was once Metropolis, before flashing back to the beginning of everything. The squad members getting their gadgets that base their core style of gameplay by stealing from the Hall of Justice seems pretty fitting to me, and in the case of Captain Boomerang and Harley, I like how their gadgets come from their rival enemy. Okay, I guess it's only three of the squad members, because King Shark is just built different. <laughs> Normally, I would want to go through the story beat for beat and give my thoughts along the way, but I find it very difficult to do that when half of my playthrough was doing side challenges, and overall it just feels like the same gameplay loop of go to a location, fight off the same kind of enemies to either destroy some crystals or defend some waypoints. Some of the side challenges throw in a curveball, like enemies can only be damaged with counters, or shield charges, or grenades, or while having a damage boost that you can only get by killing these little crawling things. And then there's just some challenges that are practically the same exact thing, just given by a different person. With that being said though, I'd be lying if I said I hated this loop. I've heard people call it mid or even terrible, but actually getting to sit down and play the game, I have a lot of fun with this style. It's that mindless shooter gameplay that makes me enjoy something like the aforementioned Destiny games. I've never given a single shit about the story of Destiny 1 and 2. I, I don't think I've ever even paid attention to any of the dialogue or cutscenes in those games. What I love to do is just jump around in the air, shoot at aliens, and throw cluster grenades to blow up large groups of them. Which is why whenever I play Destiny 2 by myself, I'm just doing Gambit matches. And that's pretty much the same gameplay I get with Kill the Justice League, especially when maining Harley. I'm sorry, but it's never gonna not be fun for me to swing around in the air like I'm Spider-Man while gunning down enemies with a gun that reloads during every crit, which I get often, and throwing a six-piece cluster grenade at groups of aliens. And of course, occasionally hitting three, four, or five to activate a special move and either deal massive damage to a grunt or wipe out an entire horde of enemies. I can see where gameplay like this could be boring or bad to someone who likes their shooters to include critical thinking, having to constantly be on your toes, aware of your surroundings, and analyzing every pixel on the screen at all times, but that's just not me because I have half a brain cell and I like to mindlessly play video games. So just getting to turn my brain off for a few hours and go hard on aliens, feeling like I'm actually good at this even though if you threw me into a COD match I'd be dead within two seconds is a lot of fun for me. I also think my favorite mission or fight or whatever you want to call it would be the cannons. There's just something about swinging around in the air, killing a bunch of enemies, and then swinging around a leg as I throw a bunch of turbinop bits to make it blow up that's a lot of fun for me. But then you get into the big things that are everyone's gripes with this game, even before it came out. The boss fights. First off, let me get this out of the way. Are you fucking really that surprised that a game called Kill the Justice League kills the Justice League? I already insinuated this in my Arkham video when the wiki page was saying you saved the Justice League, that them not dying would be a little bit of a letdown? A little bit of false marketing? Killing the Justice League in a game called Kill the Justice League just makes me feel like I'm playing the fucking game and not this it's ruining my childhood shit. I don't know, maybe I'm not that defensive over the Arkham Legacy because I wasn't a big fan of Arkham Knight with all my gripes being towards the writing. So when this game brings him back to life by saying he faked his death just to kill him off again, I'm not crying about how it ruins my childhood. I just don't care that much. I mean, let's be real, the Batman death in Arkham Knight was already kind of confusing. That final cutscene with the fear gas always made me wonder if he actually died in the explosion or not, and who the fuck this is anyways. And again, when I already don't like the game's story or writing, its follow-up having more weak moments isn't doing that much damage to me. And also, if you're one of those people who brought up Kevin Conroy's death in order to attack the game, go fuck yourself. The absolute disrespect to bring up a dead man's name to fuel your hate-filled agenda towards a game that hadn't even come out yet. The game killing off Batman isn't disrespectful to Kevin Conroy because guess fucking what? 
if he had a problem with the game killing off Batman, he would not have signed on to the fucking game, you dumbasses. You know, Twitter pissing their pants over leaked cutscenes and writing off a game that hadn't even come out yet that they literally couldn't have even played really shows that history repeats itself and I hate it so much. But anyways, with that being said, I might as well give my thoughts on the boss fights because they're pretty much the only memorable parts of the game and overall, they're a bit of a mixed bag. The first boss fight you have in the game is The Flash and honestly, I enjoyed it. I like the use of the anti-speed force thing to counteract Flash's ability in order for the team to actually be able to fight him, which to me feels like some explanation that you'd probably see in a comic book. The gameplay is also pretty good with having to counter the Flash in order to slow him down enough that you can actually get some hits off him. Though, my playthrough shows one of my slight problems with this game and how it tries to get you to switch between the different characters with this hyped character feature that'll give you a boost in XP and rewards, but I never win for any of them because I like Harley's game gameplay the most, and also all my good shit is on her, and the rest of the characters are still on level 1 default shit. Wish that wouldn't be much of a problem if I could change between the characters whenever I feel like it, but this game has a pretty stupid mechanic where you can only change characters outside of missions, you know, when you're not doing anything to level up. It was one of the same problems I had with Gotham Knights. What's the point of having all these different characters when you can't switch between them during moments that matter the most? You know how much more fun it would be to be in the middle of a battle and just casually swap from Harley to Deadshot for whatever reason? Maybe I ran out of ammo. Maybe I want to snipe the fucking snipers. I don't know, but I can't. I'm just stuck having to play as whatever character I walked into this as and I can't change it until I'm out of the mission and it doesn't fucking matter anymore. I know that was a little bit of a tangent, but I bring all this up because the hyped character for the Flash fight is Captain Boomerang, naturally, but I played through it as Harley and killed the Flash as Harley and then the cutscene is acting as if the Flash died by Captain Boomerang. It just doesn't make much sense. Despite my issues with the character swapping and the cutscenes not making sense in the canon of my gameplay, which I played The Witcher 3 with only one sword, so it's not like I'm not used to this. I still like the Flash fight, though his death as the first showing is something that repeats throughout this game that I'm not entirely happy with, but I'll get into that later. The next boss is Green Lantern, which I tried to do as the first boss fight and immediately had Harley saying we should leave, which makes sense because in order to do this you have to get a hold of the yellow ring power, which, again, I like. Just like with the Flash, you're using their weakness against them, which is like, Batman's done that before. He's used the Justice League superpowers as his advantage in order to take them down just in case something like this happened, and having the squad do the same just seems like a fitting way to defeat them. When you look at the two scenarios, it's human versus superhuman, so using their weakness to your advantage just seems logical to me. And like with the Flash fight, I do like the Green Lantern fight as well. It's more swinging around and shooting, occasionally taking down the Lantern's holograms to make John weak and take him down. I had fun with it, even when the game crashed right at the end of the fight and I had to do it all over again. <laughs> There is this weird cutscene that happens after killing Green Lantern where King Shark puts on the ring and summons a giant shark that hits Brainiac's ship and then starts heading towards the squad until they eventually get the ring off a of shark. When this first happened, I just kind of sat there watching it, not really putting too much thought into it and laughing at some of the jokes. But it wasn't until one of my coworkers brought the scene up to me saying it was really weird and didn't make much sense. And I couldn't really come up with any reasons to defend it. It really is just weird. <laughs> I'm not even that big of a Green Lantern fan outside of the DCAU, and even I know that the Lantern's ring doesn't work like this. Next up is the Batman fight. And even with all my defending, this is like the most disappointing fight in the whole game. Now to set up some context, I should probably mention a mission that happens way towards the beginning of the game. At one point, Batman is trying to get hold of the Flash, and the team ends up being separated in the dark halls of the Batman Museum, trying to get to the Flash's body. Throughout this mission, you play as a character heading towards a waypoint, using the flashlight of your gun, and hearing the noises of Batman scurrying in the dark. Eventually, he gets to you and you switch to another member of the team, and this continues until all the members have been taken out and Batman takes Flash back to Brainiac's ship. At one point, I even saw a quick flash to somebody disappearing into a grate, and it brought genuine fear to me. This mission is so good at turning the tables, and instead of making you feel like Batman, like all the Arkham games have done in the past, it makes you feel like one of those goons. 
being hunted by not only Batman, but a brainwashed Batman that's not afraid to kill feels genuinely terrifying in this mission, and it's one of my favorite parts of the entire game. Then you get to Batman's actual boss fight, where the first half of it is pretty much this mission, but in the Batcave, with a severe lack of the haunting ambience, Batman using the Scarecrow Fear Toxin, which doesn't really do much but conjures some dialogue depending on the character, and a moment where Harley tells Deadshot to go somewhere to then immediately be taken out and realizing when you then play as Harley that Batman set that up with the fear gas, and a fucking annoying amount of these goddamn bat mines that go off the immediate moment you step in its vicinity, knocking you out for a moment, making any and all controls unplayable, all while a timer is counting down so you know my anxious ass that hates being timed is totally 100% loving every moment of this. I'm totally not yelling the entire time. Now, what do you mean? Anyways, you go through this section that's more rage-inducing than scary to pretty much use the fear gas towards Batman because I guess Harley made her own batch. I don't know, this game's writing is pretty weak with a lot of its reasonings just being vague lines of dialogue that don't make that much sense. But after doing that, you get the second half of the boss fight where you go against Nightmare Batman. This design is dope as hell, but unfortunately, the actual boss fight is severely lacking because you literally just move left and right while spraying endless bullets until it's over. All this time during the marketing and the teasing of the game, with the fanbase wondering how the fuck are we going to go against Arkham Batman, and this is how. By just spraying bullets at a giant nightmare Batman. C can you see my disappointment? Like, honestly, I think I'm more upset by this than I am at the cutscene where Batman dies by Harley Quinn just shooting him in the head on a park bench. And that cutscene resonates like, no feelings for me, honestly. I can make reaches in my head as to why this would happen, like, Batman being mind-controlled or just coming off of being dosed with who knows how much fear gas, so he's like a little off his game. But in the end, none of it really makes that much sense. In a way, I can see the anger towards Arkham Batman being taken out by a bullet to the skull, but like I already said before, I don't like Arkham Knight's shitty writing, and I exhausted so much anger towards that that the follow-up also having shitty writing just doesn't do much to me. But the fight itself being this fucking boring? Like, what the fuck? We spent four games playing as this absolute monster of a take on Batman that makes us wonder how the fuck fuck we are going to go up against this version and getting a hint in this very own game of that despair that fear and then we get to his actual boss fight and it's this fucking lame how does the flash rescue mission end up being a better batman boss fight than his actual boss fight and then there's the superman fight this one i just genuinely hated doing this gave me so much gamer rage Writing-wise, it continues with the Flash and Lantern fight using Superman's weakness against him. Though because of the brainwashing, Kryptonite doesn't do anything to him, so you gotta use Golden Kryptonite! Again, it's more comic book-esque writing. Doesn't bother me at all. What was enraging about this fight was having to use the Golden Kryptonite to lower one health bar before being able to do anything to his health, which is all good and dandy until the second half hits and the song's out, causing that bar to regenerate, and then combine that with Superman going all over the place and having to constantly avoid so many things at once, you get me trying so many times to lower that health bar and get it low enough that I could start shooting at Superman just to barely be able to get a shot at him and the bar to fully regen and so many wipeouts. Eventually, I just gave up on the second health bar and just non-stop shot at Superman, and I don't know how, but that seemed to do it, and I beat the fight. To then realize that I forgot to hit record. Now, you might be wondering, what about Wonder Woman? You said she wasn't brainwashed, so what happened to her? Well, after a few scenes of her appearing and Harley being very horny for her... Step on me next! Why is it that Harley hopping on Deadshot's dick in Assault on Arkham makes me upset, but her asking Wonder Woman to step on her makes me laugh? <laughs> Anyways, after a few of those scenes, she just dies. Superman just kills her. Uh, okay, so you remember that thing that I brought up earlier that the Flash fight shows? Yeah, that thing being the deaths of the Justice League members just don't mean shit. Every single death just ends up being the final bullet that kills them, and then we move on. I don't think the deaths are even on screen. They're treated with such little regard, like there's nothing that matters at all to the members of the Justice League dying. Which, yeah, I get that would be the case for the Suicide Squad, and they've played a part in destroying the city due to being brainwashed, but that doesn't mean the Justice League members aren't fucking dying. And again, it's not like I want them to go the basic route of them being cured in a game called Kill the Justice League. I respect the decision to have the members actually die, and we play a part of it. But what I don't like is the lack of anything afterwards. There's no feeling to any of this. 
We get nothing from the in-game characters or the writing to feel sorrow in these deaths or even pride in managing to defeat the Justice League. It's not like we get to hear other characters give their take on these deaths. Lois Lane exists and will randomly be talking to the city and I don't think she says anything about Clark's death. Cash is in this game, but he's got nothing to say about Batman fucking dying. We're introduced to Toy Man in this game, with this take having him be a little kid who's a fan of the Justice League, and he's the most we get out of any outside feeling, and even then he's just easily accepting over having to kill his favorite superheroes, and only seems slightly bothered in, like, one line of dialogue. The League members just die off so quick and are easily disregarded afterwards that it feels like they didn't matter to begin with. Like they just showed up with Brainiac and are just yet another enemy and not a team of beloved superheroes that were brainwashed into betraying Earth and having to be put down. I mean, goddamn, our main base is in the Hall of Justice. This place meant for kids to see their favorite superheroes, but the way the League's deaths are disregarded so immediately makes it feel like not even this place existed. Oh, and then there's the Brainiac boss fight, but I did one attempt at it and couldn't understand a damn thing, nor could I get any damage on him. So I wouldn't watch Batman Arkham videos gameplay, and seeing even them seem to struggle has made me absolutely scared of this fight. Ain't no fucking way I'm going near that when the person to defeat Blackgate's Penguin in 8 minutes has difficulty with this fight. And of course, there's the fact that this game is canon to the Arkhamverse. Something that I'm... Honestly, not entirely sure why the writers and devs felt the need to do. You could have easily made this a standalone game, and any reference to the Arkhamverse just kind of feels so forced in. They don't show up much, but when they do, it's noticeable. I say that, but I'm also gonna say I don't give a flying fuck about Black Deadshot, and I'm kind of accepting of it because in the Batman Museum, when you click on Arkham City's Deadshot, this game's version will say this. I am not done with this phony steampunk ass looking dude. And that line is enough for me to think the reason why City's Deadshot fight sucks ass is because that's not the real Deadshot, and I'm kinda cool with that. Yeah, it still fucks with Origins, but Rocksteady doesn't want to acknowledge the Mad Hatter fight, and wants to give us shitty versions of Firefly and Deathstroke, so it's not like ignoring Deadshot would be any different. Lex Luthor having a regenerated version of Poison Ivy, who's now a child, also doesn't really bother me. I don't know, that doesn't seem that out of line for Lex, and I kinda like Child Ivy, she's funny. No! Yes. We're low, but we're not that low. Hey! Hey! Okay, time to die. And despite what I said earlier, Toy Man's overall fine. That one incredibly inferior take compared to the one I saw before this, being the DCAU version. Oh yeah, there was also this moment in the story where you're trying to find Batman and you're told that he's got a Batcave hidden somewhere in Metropolis and the only way to get in is using the Batmobile. I genuinely thought this game was about to put me in the fucking bat tank again. <laughs> but luckily, it's just Gizmo and his Wish.com version. And one thing that I really want to mention, because it's something that's sat in the back of my mind from the moment you get to see the Justice League in this game. Is anybody else getting DCEU vibes? The way they designed Bruce in this game looks less like Arkham Bruce and more like Ben Affleck. Harley's redesign looks more like Margot Robbie than anything in the Arkham games. Deadshot is black. <laughs> Keep my daughter's name out your fucking mouth! <laughs> I don't know, it just kind of makes me feel like this was initially a tie-in game to the DCEU, but then forcefully crammed into the Arkham series later down the line. But that's just me, I'm, I'm just pulling that out of my ass, I have no fucking research to back that up. With that being said, even with all my problems towards the writing, it's, 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 it's still a far better Suicide Squad story than Suicide Squad 2016. <laughs> And so what if it's canon? It's not the first time I've had to decanonize something in my head or I would have gone insane. Oh. Oh yeah. And then the Riddler's also in here. Why? No, seriously, why the fuck is he in here? You see, because he's canon in the Arkham games. We gotta have Riddler in it. God fucking damn it. I think I did maybe two riddles. I don't fucking care about the Riddler anymore! And then while I was making this video, which initially had an entire point about how there was nothing left for me to do in this game, Rocksteady dropped Season 1 with the Elseworld Joker, giving us an example of what's to come in the future. This seems to be what the team is looking at doing when it comes to updating the game with content, and it's not good. The seasons seem to be where this multiverse element comes from. You know, that whole thing about Brainiac taking over different dimensions that I casually mentioned earlier in this video. And like I said, it's not that good. 
This season, we get to go to a universe where the Joker took over, only this time Brainiac has the Joker locked up. So you gotta keep going in and out of the dimension to do the same repetitive missions of gunning down hordes of enemies, taking out cannons, or the Ivy Plant Affection missions in order to rise through the season ranks because you have to be rank 35 in order to go save the Joker. After a few hours of this grinding, I finally got to the rank and started the mission to save the Joker, and it ends up being another Brainiac fight. Unlike the first one, which was basically just a stupid impossible rendition of the game's Flash fight, this one is a stupidly long and boring rendition of its Green Lantern fight. Which tells me Season 2's Brainiac fight will be a stupidly long Batman fight, and then Season 3 will be a stupidly long and rage-inducing Superman fight, and then who the fuck knows what they're gonna do after that. Actually, who the fuck knows if this game will even get a Season 2. After spending 25 minutes just swinging around, avoiding all the enemies non-stop, shooting at Brainiac whenever possible, and the occasional holding E to activate Hack's Construct Overloads or running the Toy Man's shield o I finally defeated Brainiac, the Joker was summoned, taken back to the Hall of Justice, and he becomes a playable character with gameplay that's... alright, but I'm still a fan of Harley's the most. After that, that's it. You can continue to do these repetitive missions as the Joker, or do what I did and go through the Batman experience to see if he has anything interesting to say, which he does. Wow, this is very existential for me. I always wondered what I'd look like dead. Answer, Waxy. My Batman never held me like that. Maybe I went overboard on the chloroform? Huh, don't know this guy, but he's got a real face for crowbars. See, what I like is, he could have called himself Money Man, but he went with Bat. And that's a choice. Wow, they're just like us. I'd blow them right up if I could. <laughs> Wait, that's it? No more backstory? No more jingles? Tell me there's a gift shop. I want a pressed penny. I love this take on Deadshot. Very problematic. Problematic in what way? That his fight with shit? Actually, this proves my headcanon even more. If she was just the sidekick, your Joker's getup must have been skimpy. Me? I don't lace my corset that tight. Need room to laugh. Okay, this Joker is just 100% gay. <laughs> it's not a surprise to me that this first season has done absolutely nothing to bring back players and the game continues to fall on every chart because this is just nothing. It's more of the same repetitive gameplay loop with not a single new thing added just to redo the Green Lantern fight, but it just goes on forever and then that's it. So is this gonna be every new season? Nothing new added except for a playable character that you could just buy if you want and worse versions of the previous boss fights? Not only does it come off as extremely lazy, but it's just not hopeful for this game's future. I don't even know if I'll return to this game for Season 2 unless Rocksteady decides to actually add new shit. A new character is not enough for an entire season of an online game. There's not even anything related to the main story, just some more of the same exact missions we've already spent hours doing. And I might as well get my thoughts on this Joker's performance since we got a new actor to play the character, J.P. Garliak. He gives an alright performance with some humorous deliveries of his lines, but for the most part I find myself hearing a lot of Troy Baker. And I'm not meaning Troy Baker's Joker, no, just Troy Baker himself. Most of the time when I hear this Joker speak, it sounds like somebody doing a Troy Baker impression with hints of Joker paint on top of it. Honestly, not quite sure where I'd put him in the ranking. It's a toss-up between Midland and one of the performances of all time. I don't hate this version of the Joker, though. I know it's following up after the Arkham version of Mark Hamill, but I don't really care. I'm looking at this as its own standalone Joker, and it's fine. Though maybe some more lore about him and his universe would be cool. Anyways, with some more time to sit and dwell on the lasting impact of this game in the few months it's been out, and the inclusion of this new season, I like the game less than I initially did. I still don't mind the gameplay, it's nice to just zone out for a few hours and kill enemies, but god is the loop repetitive. And the new season doing nothing to add, change, or do justice to any of it really makes it sink in. On top of the weak-ass writing in its main story, the complete lack of writing in this new season, and overall barely any content in both the base game and the additions makes me reshape my view on this game and the initial score I gave it, which was initially Midland, but now I'm kind of honestly thinking Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is one of the games of all time. The $70 is just really not worth it for how little this game provides, especially as an online game. I brought up Destiny 2 quite a few times in this video, and that's because that game has so much content to it that I could never even keep track of. Countless updates and seasons that add so many new stories and missions, on top of other things like the aforementioned Gambit matches, all for being free to play. 
Quite honestly, I don't even know what the hell you would have to pay for. I know there's stuff on the Steam store to get, but I've never gotten any of them. Yeah, I could boot up this game right now and do a couple Gambit matches or play through a new storyline with my friend. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League on the other hand. I'd have to get my friend to want to spend $70 on it to begin with, which just isn't going to happen. And for what? Maybe a few hours of fun and then never given a reason to pick up the game again? And for me to play it standalone is even less of a reason given how I've already done the main story and the first look, the first experience us players get at Rocksteady's vision of this game's seasons is lazy do-nothing mid that I can complete after a few hours. I still don't think this game ruins my childhood or the Arkham Legacy, nor could I really call it a disappointment because I wasn't even that hyped for this game to begin with. Quite honestly, I bought it out of spite because of Twitter's bitching over the leaks, but man, this just does so little to justify its existence. I'm quite curious what Rocksteady's gonna do with this game in the future. If they even decide to do anything or continue going down this nothing route, ignoring any actual criticism of the game and become the next Ubisoft. But for now, this is just a game that exists for some reason. I guess it's better than Gotham Knights since I put more time into this than that game and I also don't have to spend $10 every time I want to play it. And I guess since technically it's in canon with the Arkhamverse, I'll throw it in my rankings with the other games. Uh, probably above VR, I guess. I gave both games the same score. VR, I'd have less of a reason to touch it, I guess. Gameplay is a little more fun. Yeah, I guess, I guess it could be above VR, but yeah. I guess we'll see what Sefton Hill and Jamie Walker come up with over at 100 Star Games. And of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. subscribe and please